Yvonne from Yvonne's Kitchen, and today we're in the kitchen cooking seafood gumbo. At least Yvonne's version of seafood gumbo. So, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna chop up my vegetables, which is usually called the Trinity, where you have celery, you have green peppers, and you have onions. So, I'm gonna get to chopping, and we're gonna go from there. I wanna chop these up in big chunks though. I like my, my gumbo a little chunky. So I'm gonna chop these up in big chunks. So they'll be basically good size. So now that I have all of my vegetables chopped, I'm gonna chop up my sausage. I use two types of sausage. I like to use smoked sausage and andouille sausage. So I'm gonna cut those up. They'll be in pretty big chunks too. Like I said, I like my gumbo to be chunky. So those will be basically about like that size. I'm gonna get these all chopped up. Okay, so I have all of my sausage cut up. I mixed it up. I have andouille sausage and smoked sausage. And I'm gonna stick this in the oven and just let it cook. So I have my sausages in the oven at 350 degrees. And I'm gonna let those just sit there and release their juices for about 20, 25 minutes. And I have all of my Trinity cut up, my onions, my celery, and my bell pepper. So next, I'm going to cook my okra, saute my okra. I like to cook it before I put it in my gumbo so that it's not so thick. And Because a lot of people don't like okra in their gumbo, but it's used as a thickener. It's a vegetable. I like it for taste. So I'm going to put it in there. Um, I have some frozen okra. And I've got 24 ounces of frozen okra. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna saute it. So I'm going to put a little olive oil in my pot. I'm gonna saute it with onions. Even though I'm putting onions in the, oh, in the gumbo, I'm gonna saute this with onions. And it's going, the longer you cook okra, the more it will disintegrate. Once it disintegrates, it becomes even more of a thickening agent. And I like my gumbo to be kind of thick. So we're gonna saute this up before we put it in there. And let it cook for at least a half an hour so that it's good and soft. Turn it down and just let it sit there for a good half an hour. Also, to my okra, I'm gonna season it. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper and a little bit of Creole seasoning. And I put a half a cup of water in here as well. Um, because it's gonna be cooking for so long, we don't want it to stick or burn. So I put a little water in there. The reason for seasoning everything as I go is because you build those flavors on top of flavors and keep building them. And then when you get to your final pot, all that flavor just comes to us. So while my okra is cooking and my sausage is cooking, I'm going to peel my shrimp. I have three pounds of shrimp, so I'm gonna peel those and remove the tails and get those ready. So I've peeled and deveined all my shrimp. I added extra pounds, so I have four pounds of shrimp. And all the shells that I took off of them, I'm gonna put them in a pot of water and boil them and make some shrimp stock to use in my gumbo. So those are gonna start to boil right now. So my sausage is done. I took it out of the oven. It was in there for about 20 minutes. You can see it's done. There's a lot of juice going on in there. 
So I'm going to actually pour all of this juice in my gumbo. That's why I put it in the oven, just to get all of that juice out of here. More flavor, building on building on building. I'm going to let that sit. My okra is still cooking. So I'm going to let that go for a little longer. And so my okra is done cooking. And what I'm going to do, I said a lot of people don't like okra in their gumbo. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a potato and I'm going to mash it up just a little. I'm going to still have some whole little pieces in there, but I'm just going to mash some of this up so that when it's in the gumbo, you don't even know what's in there, but it's going to be in there doing its thing, giving it some flavor and providing your vegetables and doing that thickening agent job for me. So that's good. I just wanted to thicken it up just a little and we're going to go from there. So, prep work is done. Now I'm about to get down to the real nitty gritty. I am getting ready to make my roux and I'm gonna saute these vegetables. So, as far as my roux, I put two sticks of butter in here and what you that's, that's considered a cup. So for your roux, you mix equal parts flour and butter. So I'm gonna put a cup of flour in here. Take my whisk and I'm going to whisk that together. And it makes like a, a paste almost. And what I'm gonna do, it's a, it's a blonde color now, so it's considered blonde roux, but we want a dark caramel colored roux. So I'm gonna let this cook on low and so that it can turn brown. While it's doing that, I'm going to start sauteing my vegetables. Start out of the way. I'm going to start sauteing my vegetables. Just need a hot skillet. The roux, you have to continuously stir it. I'm going to turn it down. Some people will cook a roux with oil. I cook mine with butter because it will brown faster and I get a better color. The roux is the most important part of the gumbo. So, I'm going to start to throw my vegetables in my oil. take approximately 10 minutes for both of those, well, five minutes for the vegetables, about 10 minutes for the roux. So, while that's cooking, I'm going to start to cut up my crab legs. As you can see, I've got some nice crab legs here. And I like to put big, remember I said my gumbo will be chunky, so I'll put whole legs in the in my gumbo. So I'm gonna start cutting these up while that's do, um, turning brown and sauteed and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm breaking up my crab legs. Um, basically, if you just twist it a little, it'll come off. So you'll have this big piece, you'll have this big piece. Just break them off. There we go. And I'm gonna finish breaking these up. Okay, so my roux is done. As you can see, it's a dark brown color, which is what we wanted. My vegetables are translucent, so they're ready. And the reason I put the vegetables 
in a pan and saute them first is to loosen up all the flavor before it goes in the pan. So we're going to start combining things now. First thing we're going to do, I have a really large pan because I'm making a lot of gumbo, is I'm going to take my shrimp stock, strain that into the pan. Then I'm going to add some chicken stock. These are 32 ounces. I'm gonna add three of these. Okay, so I have my bay leaves in there. I'm gonna put some Old Bay seasoning in there. I'm gonna put a little garlic powder in there. It's Creole, so I gotta put my Creole seasoning in there. Remember, my Creole seasoning has a lot of salt, so I'm not gonna put any salt in there. I'm gonna put my black pepper in there. Let's give it a stir. We're gonna let that sit for at least 20 minutes. So this is what it looks like now. And then I'm gonna let it cook for at least 20 minutes. If you notice, I have not cooked, put any seafood in it yet. Cause the shrimp is already cooked. The crab legs don't need to cook, but a very little bit. So I'm gonna let this cook, let all my vegetables cook a little more, let my okra cook, everything marinate together, all the seasonings and things. All right, so we're back. It's been cooking for over 20 minutes. So get a good look at it, nice and chunky. So I'm ready to put my seafood in it. It's been, my seafood's been sitting over there on ice. So I have Crab legs, lots of crab legs. We're gonna throw our shrimp in here. Actually, I'm gonna let the crab legs cook first. How about we do that? Cause they need to cook a little bit longer. The shrimp are already cooked. So I'm just gonna throw the crab legs in there. Let them cook for about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna throw my shrimp in there. Cause the shrimp don't really need to cook. So I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then I'll throw my shrimp. So, my gumbo has been cooking for a little while with the, with 10 minutes with the crab legs. And now I'm gonna add this big old bowl full of shrimp in here. And just let it warm up. They don't have to cook, they're already cooked. So I'm just gonna add them in here. Oh, and matter of fact, this gumbo is a very special gumbo because I'm dedicating it to a group that I'm in on Facebook. The uh, group is called the Alliance of Black Restaurants, the Alliance of Black Restaurant Tours, Chefs and Caterers. And since I'm a caterer, I'm in that group. And so this gumbo is dedicated to that group tonight. So a special shout out to George Cummings. He's one of the administrators of the group. Come a little closer and get a look at our gumbo. So you can see it has meat, it has beef, it has sausage, it has crab legs, it has shrimp. So I'm just gonna let that heat up a little while and I'm cooking a pot of rice and we will be good to go. So my gumbo is done and I am about to fix me a nice little bowl of it. I want a crab leg in mine, let's see. Here's one. Okay. I'm gonna put a few green onions on there. And there we go. Now let's see how it tastes. Nice big shrimp in there. Some rice. Mm. 
Mm. Yes. It's not Louisiana gumbo. It's LeBon's gumbo. There you go. Thanks for joining us in LeBon's kitchen. Bye.